Hi, it's Steve. In this video, we'd like to show you some tips on how to properly clean your clothes dryer. Keeping your clothes dryer clean is not just about the aesthetics of it, it's also about making your dryer run more efficiently, safely, and also to last longer. Now we'll begin by cleaning the exterior of the dryer, both the cabinet and our main top and our console as well. We suggest using your favorite spray-on type multi-surface cleaner, a soft cotton cloth or microfiber, and be sure to clean into all of the tight crevices, areas where you don't necessarily see, remove the knobs to clean in behind them, and if you find those are stained quite badly, you can actually soak those in a hot water and soap solution, or maybe baking soda or vinegar or something like that. Soak them in as hot as water as possible, and then wash them afterwards. Be sure to thoroughly rinse everything when you're done. Avoid harsh or abrasive cleansers, as well as abrasive cleansing or scouring pads. And once we've thoroughly cleaned the exterior of the dryer, if you wish, you can apply an automotive wax, and that'll keep a nice shiny finish and also make it easier to clean in the future. We'll also want to remove the lint filter and clean in around that area as well. While we have that lint filter out, remove all of the lint, of course, but also inspect the mesh or screen to see if there's any buildup of fabric softener on that. If there is, you'll need to soak that in as hot as water as possible with soap, not detergent. You also may require a soft bristled brush to thoroughly clean that. It is important to keep that screen as clean as possible as it improves airflow and therefore the efficiency of your dryer. Once we've cleaned that thoroughly, you should also take a long crevice tool and insert it into that opening and vacuum out as much lint as possible. Now on dryers that have electronic controls, we want to use extra caution when cleaning the console area of those. Make sure that we don't use too much liquid when cleaning that surface and also make sure that it's thoroughly dry when we're done. Now once we have the exterior of the dryer clean, we'll next want to look at the interior. So we'll open up our dryer door and the first thing we'll do is inspect the tumbler or drum. For any signs of stains from either crayons or ink or gum, anything like that, that may be attached to the inner surface of the drum or onto the clothes lifters or baffles. We'll spot treat any of those stains using an appropriate cleaner designed for that type of stain, whether it's crayon or ink or gum. Such products like Goo Gone or Magic Eraser or any type of a commercial cleaner that is specific for a type of stain we'll want to use. Dye stains that you see here are typically very difficult to remove, however they don't typically transfer onto other items of clothing and it's not so much of a concern other than aesthetically. Now one thing we want to be careful of when we're cleaning the interior of your dryer is not to use any petroleum based products. Those types of chemicals will damage any painted surfaces and cause irreparable damage. With any petroleum product, since they are flammable, we certainly don't want to use that anywhere near a heating source in our dryer. Now once we've cleaned the interior of our drum, we'll next open up our lint filter area again and we'll look into that opening and see if there's any lint buildup that is not accessible with a crevice tool. At this point, you can take a long slender brush and put it down in that area and we'll loosen up some of that lint. And then either attempt to vacuum it out with your crevice tool or simply turn the dryer on and exhaust that lint out through the exhaust vent. Because lint is highly flammable, it makes it that much more important that we do a deep cleaning on a periodic basis. With some types of dryers, you may have a lower access panel that you can simply remove and do your inspection. Others may require removing the complete front panel to view that area. So next we'll show you an example of how much lint can build up in a dryer. Now that we have the lower access panel removed on this dryer, you get a pretty good visual of how much lint can get built up inside of a closed dryer. Particularly with gas fire dryers where we would have an open flame in this area, you can see the potential for a fire. As we mentioned, all dryers produce lint. And depending on how efficient your venting system is, that will typically dictate how much of that lint gets exited 
out of the house and away from the dryer. We'll next remove the outlet duct assembly so that you can see how much lint is in behind that area as well. Now when we look down into this outlet duct assembly, you can see the amount of lint that is built up in here as well as where it connects to the blower fan. Our dryers work by sucking air through the drum and then exiting it out through a vent pipe to the exterior of your home. When we get a buildup of lint in this area, that restricts the amount of airflow. Therefore, that lint will not stay in suspension in the air and will actually tend to accumulate that much faster. It also decreases the efficiency of your dryer, resulting in longer dry times and therefore more energy use. With this particular one, it's a pretty good indication that we have a very poor venting system and we'll need to look at that separately. For now, we'll need to remove the drum and the outer door panel here so we can completely clean the interior of this dryer to remove any potential of a fire hazard. Now with the drum and front panel removed from this dryer, we'll get a really good view of the amount of lint that's in here and the potential it has to not only reduce the efficiency of this dryer, but also how much of a fire hazard it presents. You can actually see on top of the heater where that lint is charred from the heat. Now as well, we need to pay careful attention to the drive motor. That will tend to build up with lint as well, causing it to overheat, and it also wicks away any lubrication that is built into the bushings on that motor and will shorten the lifespan of it. So we next need to make sure that we vacuum all of this lint out of the dryer, making sure we get it out of the motor. You may even need to use some compressed air to blow that lint out of there. Vacuum it all up, particularly around the element as well. Now that we understand basically how a clothes dryer works and that we're actually sucking air through that drum and exhausting it to the exterior of the home, if we don't have that good airflow, lint is more prone to build up inside of the dryer. So to increase the airflow or to make sure that it's maintained properly, we need to make sure that our door seals are in good shape. So inspect those, make sure they fit nice and tight, and there's no rips or tears in them. If so, they'll need to be replaced. We also need to make sure dryer drum seals are in good shape. Typical dryer drum seals are attached to both front and rear of the drum and they will mate up against either the rear or front bulkhead, so inspect those carefully. If they show any signs of wear, or if they're dried or cracked out, you'll need to replace them. So now that we have our dryer nice and clean, we've removed all of the vent, we've inspected our drum seals and our door seals, making sure everything is okay there. Next, we'll want to inspect that dryer vent. Keeping in mind that a properly designed vent using the proper materials will not only increase the efficiency of your dryer, it actually will allow the dryer to last longer and use less energy. Thank you so much for watching. We certainly hope this video was helpful to you. And be sure to subscribe so you don't miss a thing.